Hi, lecture on plant molecular farming, contents, introduction, definition, production system strategies for production, stable expression, transient expression, advantages and disadvantages. Now what is plant molecular farming? Application of biological techniques or biotechnological programs to synthesize commercial products of pharmaceutical substance in plants. Farming is a merged word of farming and pharmaceutical. It is also known as molecular farming or biofarming. These are the few words that you will be coming across the lecture. So I have defined it here, genetically modified organisms. Organisms that are genetically engineered, complementary DNA, a double-stranded DNA synthesized in vitro from an mRNA by using reverse transcriptase and DNA polymerase. Constitutive synthesis, continuous production of RNA or protein by an organism. Promoter, a segment of DNA to which RNA polymerase attaches. It usually lies upstream of a gene that is the 5' region. A promoter sequence, it aligns the RNA polymerase so that the transcription will initiate at a specific nucleotide. This is fantastic. Terminator, a sequence of DNA at the 3' end of a gene that stops transcription. Next, plantibodies. A plantibody is an antibody produced by genetically modified organism. Now, why did they choose plant as the production system? Basically, due to problems associated with the existing fermentation or bioreactor systems. Mammalian systems are very expensive, cannot be scaled up, but bacterial systems can be scaled up. But often, the recombinant proteins are not properly processed. Plant systems can be scaled up. In plants, sometimes purification can be omitted. Example is vaccines from plant source. Many cases, functional proteins are obtained, can target the recombinant protein to the cellular compartments. Contamination of the protein product is very much reduced. Now, transgenic plants used for production are potato, tobacco, maize, sugar beet, oil seed rape, Arabidopsis, soya bean, cotton, wheat, and rice. Now, these transgenic plants are used for the production of carbohydrates and lipids, protein products such as enzymes for industrial and agricultural use, medically related proteins such as antibodies, subunit vaccines, and protein antibiotics. Now, these are some of the roots for the expression of proteins in a transformed plant. Now, the stable expression is what we are going to see here. You can see the protein targeting sequence. And this is the sequence for a high value protein. This is the coding sequence for a high value protein. And these two are ligated into vectors. Okay, so the vector do have a constitutive promoter. Another vector is it has a tissue specific promoter. Okay, so these two are the terminators. So, this uh, protein targeting sequence and the coding sequence for high value protein, it can be any protein, any protein, medically related protein also, or industrially related protein or agriculture use, whatsoever. They are ligated into vectors. Okay? One do have a constitutive promoter, another vector has a tissue specific promoter. Now, constitutive promoter is a very strong promoter and when this promoter is ligated, is present in the vector rather, along with the uh, targeted uh, uh, 
say transgene what happens is there is production of bulk protein continuously continuous synthesis is there but we got to look into the yield whether it is uh, accordingly a sufficient quantity is obtained or not but what happens in a constitutive expression uh, is that or a continuous synthesis is when a constitutive promoter is there it might get expressed in various other parts of the plant which is not utilized okay so that becomes an effective waste of the resources now when it is a tissue specific promoter it is the gene is directly uh, what is targeted into a particular tissue or a cellular compartments and there you know the integrity and the stability of the protein is maintained for a very long time if you take for example seeds or tubers now these are transferred into the plant via agrobacterium or biolistic transformation so after it has been expressed you get uh, you can extract the foreign protein or you can extraction of foreign protein from a targeted tissue and you can go ahead feeding of the edible tissue to animal or human patients next is so this uh, it's a pharmaceutical protein purification in oil bodies this is the structure of transgene in brassica napis you have the oleosin promoter oleosin this small segment here it is the protease recognition site protease it does the cleavage activity then this is the pharmaceutical protein and here the terminator so these are the transgenes that is being transferred into or expressed in rape seed so once it is expressed in rape seed and it is targeted to the oil bodies so that is very important this is an intracellular targeting so it is targeted to the oil bodies and the silic here is taken harvested it it is crushed and centrifuge so after centrifugation you find two layers one is oleosin as well as the other one is the plant debris layer so this oil body consists of the desired protein along with that of the protease recognition site now again the entire content is transferred to a fresh centrifuge tube and here it is treated with protease what does protease do it recognizes the protease recognition signs and it cleaves the oleosin from that of the pharmaceutical protein and hence again the entire content when transferred to the centrifuge tube fresh one you get two layers that is on the surface you get the oil body and you get the pharmaceutical protein in the soluble fraction and here the oil body consists of oleosin and phospholipid monolayer there is also present here okay now recombinant plant virus carrying a protein epitope or transient expression it is now the epitope is nothing but a chemical domain that is present in an antigen which is recognized by an antibody now here they have used the coat protein of a plant virus to integrate or to ligate the epitope okay into this viral dna you can see here this is the epitope okay this is the code protein sequence of the rna genome so here you have the epitope or this is the protein sequence that is ligated into the viral complementary dna as the vector 
Okay, so once this is ligated, it becomes an infectious RNA. This infectious RNA is transfected into the plants. So you get various uh, plant, mini plants and from here, from the plants that is expressed this particular infectious RNA which do contain the epitope is purified. When you purify it, you can see that the plant virus capsid is expressing, carrying this epitope. Okay, so this is what is otherwise known as the overcoat system. Now here this is an antibody. Now in an antibody, the this particular region where I have indicated it as V is known as the variable region. This variable region is known as antigen binding sites. So this antibody do have a light chain as well as heavy chain. The hinge is also the heavy chain. Now here C is the constant region and V is the variable region. L is light. So it is variable light, variable heavy, uh, constant heavy and you have the constant light region. So you have variable regions in both the light chains and the heavy chains and heavy as well as the heavy chain. So this is our antibody wherein you can see the antigen binding signs which are present in the variable regions of the antibody and this recognizes the antigen binding sites or the chemical domain that is present in the antigen, nothing but the epitope. Now, production of secretory IgA in plants. So, secretory IgA is predominant IgA or antibody which is present in the secretions. Now, here what they did, uh, there is production of um, transgenic plant lines and they, uh, they use the tobacco plant lines. Okay. Now here the uh, heavy chain, gene of heavy chain was expressed in a tobacco plant. So they did get a transgenic tobacco line and the light chain against gene was separately expressed in tobacco plant and obtaining a, a transgenic tobacco line. These two were crossed. So you do have two separate tobacco lines, transgenic tobacco lines. They were crossed and the F1 progeny you get here the assembly of IgA. Now usually the secretory IgA exists as a dimer. It is a complicated structure. Then from the second step, that is from the F1, was again crossed with that of the J chain. So J chain also was separately expressed in a transgenic tobacco line. So when these two were crossed, the F1 progeny with that of the tobacco line, which is carrying the J chain, you get a dimeric IgA. So now the secretory IgA is required. So again, the secretory component was expressed in another tobacco line. They were crossed and you get the complete uh, assembly of this secretory IgA. And this is very important. Uh, usually, you know, they target it to the endoplasmic reticulum or uh, especially to the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum. They do say that the assembly processing and the stability is and the production is very high in this region. What is advantage of this molecular farming? Infrastructure already exists for planting, harvesting and processing of plant material. It's a cost effective technology than with the transgenic animal, animals, fermentation or bioreactors. 
plant cells can direct proteins to specific tissues that reduce degradation and thus increase stability. Plants contain no toxins that could contaminate the final product. Plants are able to fold, cross-link, post-translationally modify non-plant proteins sufficiently to ensure that the functional proteins are obtained. Okay, so these are the advantages of using a uh, plant as a uh, in molecular farming. What are the disadvantages? The main disadvantage is product safety. The purified protein may be contaminated with toxic substance from the plant or applied to the plant. So uh, here it is the chemical substance that the chemical fertilizer they might apply so that might turn out to be toxic and sometimes some internal metabolites in the plant might affect the protein. Next transgene pollution. Apart from the transgenic plant, the gene might get uh, transferred to a non-transgenic plant and uh, that is why they do say transgene pollution because pollination always takes place, right? These are a few books I referred. Thought for the moment, be positive, happiness is in abundance. Thank you.